God. Oh, man. Welcome back, Wash Up Walk Hunts fans. Episode 253 of the podcast. I am almost in tears right now laughing at uh, the shenanigans that have been going over on patreon.com backslash washed up walk ons. Shameless plug, but the Tuesday morning uh, extra that Kluver and I have been coming up with has been hot lava. And uh, it's the content that you guys are looking for out here on the internet. I'm telling you guys, we've got some really good stuff over there on Patreon. So go check it out. Uh, we're playing Maryland this week, and I don't know anything about Maryland. So I hope these other two guys do. Um, but that's what I got, man. Kluver. Kev, you know anything about Maryland? Uh, yeah, it's on the East coast. It is on the East coast. DC. They have the ugliest. And I heard they have crab cakes, right? They got some, they got some some pretty good crab cakes over there. I, I, I'm not a, I'm allergic. So good crab cakes, horrible uniforms. Uniforms aren't great. Odd color. They basically, if you, if you mashed Iowa state and Iowa together, and you got this weird little, like, weird cousin. That's Maryland, basically. It's like a little inbred, little inbred between those two. It's a little, yeah, a little in the family uh, Maryland is, is what you come up with. And we're going to get to them in a second. In fact, Kevin and Drake don't even know this, but tech guy slash CEO of this organization went ahead and got a little cross enemy lines reconnaissance like we did in week one uh in week one we talked to scott caulfield from indiana and he gave us a a bunch of great insight on the hoosiers we took care of them hopefully we can do that this week but somewhere in this podcast i will input the conversation that i had with a maryland senior who is a beat writer and head editor of their school newspaper and he's trying to get into the into the game and he offered up some good information Personnel wise on the Maryland Terrapins, the turtles, as some would say, I like totals. Uh, so you'll hear that in a bit and he'll be able to tell you a little bit more. Kevin, what were you going to say? I said Terrapin. That's turtle. Turtle. Is that Spanish for turtle? No, that's Tortuga. I don't know. Let's look it up. Where do you get Terrapin? Look that up for me. In the meantime, uh, Drake mentioned the Patreon and we really don't want to sound selly. But we have a good uh, – we, we do do a bunch of funny shit over there. Uh, this week, Drake – I mean, this was one of five good parts of the podcast, but Drake was in a situation, a scenario, uh, where there was a potential murder on uh, at play. And, yeah, I, I get that it's a turtle, Kevin, but what? where does Terrapin come from? Um, one, one of several small species of turtle living in fresh or brackish water. Oh, okay. It's a species. Okay. So they're not even a big turtle. That's, that's embarrassing. Uh, Drake almost killed someone at a gas stop in the middle of the desert. And if you want to hear that and you and you really want to pay us for extra content and donate to the kids, that's patreon.com slash washed up walk-ons. I was hit up by a listener, a fan of the show. And this week, uh, he he let me onto this thing that a uh, a nurse at the children's hospital just started. It's a GoFundMe, and I thought that this would be an awesome way for us to support specifically a cause at the hospital. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but if you would like to, it is GoFundMe.com, and then just search Holidays and Hawkeyes Sleepers for the NICU. Um, this girl's name is Liz. She works at the children's hospital, uh, and every year. They do something for specific for them. This year, they're going to do little, basically onesies. And she's got a little, a, a cute little picture here. They've got $2,700 raised so far. And I thought that, and I'm just throwing this out to you guys. If you guys, I've put you on the spot now. If you, if you tell me that this is a dumb idea, now you look like assholes. But I thought that all the Patreon signups, 100% of the Patreon signups from Thursday, when this comes out, to when this thing ends, which I think it's like 10 days or so or maybe five days, um, all of our proceeds will go to a donation to that. Yeah, it up. sell it. Send claps it. claps Just for that. Send it. All right, so sleepers for the NICU. And honestly, if we were really on top of things, we'd get a little honeypot sleeper for them and they could wear little cute onesies with a honeypot on it, maybe next year. Um, cool. So if you want to sign up and support that, 100% of anybody's signups will go there. 
Uh, we've got a few things on the agenda here before we get to the Terrapins. I'm going to share my screen, and I don't know if the screen is big enough for these two or not. Oh, their heads do fit on the screen. Ah, he's got jokes. Barely. Um, how freaking cool is this, dude? How amazing would this be to, to jersey swap with your brother in the NFL? We've got Nick Neiman and Ben Neiman on the screen for the listeners. I'm jealous. I yeah, I mean, ben that's, that's the American dream right there, right? Yeah, I talked to Ben about it, and I was like, dude, you played against your brother in the National Football League. And he's like, yeah, man, little bro beat my ass too. <laughs> sure did. Sure did. Chargers upset. I don't even know if it's an upset. Chargers are looking like one of the best teams in the league. Chiefs obviously have kind of. Bro, how about, you know how we were talking about how, you know how we were talking about how it's fade the city of New York? Yeah. It's all in on the city of Los Angeles. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, this is just one of the coolest things. You can go to Nick Neiman or Ben Neiman's social to see this. Um, and there was speculation. Now this picture doesn't make it look as bad. There was speculation from one picture that Nick has a bigger head than Ben. Well, here's the thing is that mm. Nick for sure has a bigger face, bigger face, him. bigger face, but and the whole... we called him face Neiman. Like that was his nickname. Old boy has a face on him, Yeah, but that's okay. Cause he's got a nice smile. He's got a big look, face. You got, you, nice got, you got to look and see you do. You have to do this in orthopedics too. You got to look at both planes so you gotta look at yep. the front you gotta look at the side you look at the side and ben's ben's noggin it's like, if you do how, a, does, how does that thing fit in a helmet yeah if you know. were to go into the science lab at the university of iowa and do a water displacement test and you just stuck their heads down in a thing of water ben would end up having more water coming out of uh, out of that tub and uh if and you Nick's look at if you look at ben uh from a side profile it's as big as a barn it's His big. head is like the side of a barn. Park a damn. Mr. We got like a Mr. Mackey thing going on. You could park a damn truck in there, you know. Um, next on the agenda, Drake. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought this up, man. <laughs> Bro, I sent this to Kluver two days ago. Like, how are you doing this in the middle of the season? For those that don't know or potentially interested, some of you may have eligibility out there. Arizona football, the Wildcats, who are God awful. They're bad. Uh, are having walk on tryouts they are mid season. as dog shit as the city that they play in. Okay. Tucson, like, Arizona, absolute meth hellhole. Wow. And uh, they play in the middle of, yeah. Do you think uh, any of the players are on meth and that's why they're not good at football? They're playing about like they're a bunch of meth heads. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine, so. Just imagine this from like you're the head coach perspective. Yeah. Uh huh. Like, well, well, these guys can't get it done. We're let's see if anybody else out there knows how to run the. Anybody ball. around Tucson that can throw some cleats on? Hey, can you run a slant route, Jimmy? You got a like jersey. You, you, like you've seen this like a time or two, but it's like in the summer or in the spring or something right. like that, or come to a spring practice, not in the middle of the season. This is what they're devoting their time to. Is yeah. this. Mm -hmm. walk on tryouts for those interested that may be in the tucson area tuesday october 12th 2021 at 6 p.m in arizona stadium um you might you might prefer to continue just being a normal person and not being a division one athlete if this is the alternative what do you what do you think the chances are that say one of us were to change our name legally enroll in classes do you think like the NCA would find out if uh, if that was in fact us? I bet that you, if you really wanted to, you could slide it through. You would have to change your name because on the tryout thing, it says you have to be cleared with the eligibility center, uh, which we all had to do at one point, like our senior year um, of mm -hmm. high school. So I don't know. There might have to be. I don't. I don't think they made you like turn in your ID. Maybe they had your social security number. I, I don't know how they really verify that, but you could fake a social too. Um, if you, if you really wanted to. Yeah. I mean, they, everyone's got fake identities out there that they, they, they fall back on. Right. Hell Iowa supposedly was the fake identity of college football in 2015. According to Colin Cowherd, um, Kevin, we were tagging this. I think you were as well. And someone said, this seems like something Kevin Ward would do. All right. 
Oh, that's just an electric human being right there just enjoying a good win. Now, this is what's playing on the screen. Could you guys hear that or not? Well, am I reading that this is before the football game? This is... Uh, this is a man that plays for Georgia State, and they are on their way to the game. Wow. Someone, he's on top of the bus, and someone tossed him a beer cold stone style, and he chugged the entire thing as the bus drives away. Did you away. just say cold stone instead of stone cold? <laughs> cold stone <laughs> stone. Bro. Hey, hey, what did I How say? How drunk are you right now? What did guy? I say? St- <laughs> cold, cold stone. Is- He's the ice cream man. He's got ice Sto- cream on the Stone mind. cold, Drake. What did I tell you? I'm the ice cream guy. In the Patreon yesterday, I told you. Um, stone cold style. This guy chugs a beer on the way to a game on, a, on top of a moving bus. And someone said that that reminded you, them of you, Kevin. Uh, oof. I don't. That would be, that would, that would be <laughs> some serious shit. You know, maybe, maybe after winning the national championship, sure, that's something I might do. But. Ah, going to the game. I don't think I'd ever be welcome back in the facility again. There's a good chance. Uh, this Homie one quit the game in the quit the team in the middle of the game and tweeted at him. Uh, that's correct. This guy, uh, Ohio State, Ohio State linebacker Kayvon Pope, apparently quits team. Angry tweets in the middle of the game against Akron, in which they were blowing them out. Uh, Pope was attempting to come onto the field during a play and seemed to be waved off by captain and fellow linebacker Taraja Mitchell. That apparently did not sit well with Pope. He immediately became animated on the sidelines, had a heated exchange with a couple of the coaches, and then went into the locker room. Uh, Shortly after, uh, he tweeted, I believe, fuck Ohio State, and another tweet said something like, good luck to my teammates this year. Just quit, middle of the game. Reminds me of uh, who yep. was it in Brand. the NFL? Oh, retired I thought you were say at, he retired at halftime. Like it was like two years ago. Um, I don't know, but this it was. Uh, I think it was some dude on the Jets just retired at halftime. It's not good. It's just not like good. you know what, <laughs> it's just not working anymore. If there was ever a game that I wanted to retire at halftime of, it was uh, probably Minnesota 2014. Oh, that was a miserable game. What about the Rose Bowl? The Rose Bowl's close, but also, like, at least you're in the Rose Bowl playing and you're ranked. Freezing your balls off. Right? We got beat equally as bad, if not worse, by Minnesota. And it's not like they were a good team either. They didn't have Christian McCaffrey. And we got the brakes beat off of us on a cold, slightly wet day in Minneapolis. And it was one of the most miserable things we went through in our five years. Were you guys there? I, I was there. I was okay. There. I Kevin was, was there. I, Drake, I for one, yeah, was miserable. Yeah. Nope. Drake. I skirted by on that one. Nice. Okay, you got out on that. This one. is that 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 is an incredible development. I would love to find out if that guy ever plays college football ever again. I would imagine, dude. This and this guy was a four-star recruit with offers from you name it, Georgia, Clemson. What Bama. year is he? Um, I believe he was class of 2018. Because the dude looks about 27. Yes, he does. Man, <laughs> he man has a, looks like a fat fuck. He, yeah, he kind of looks a little beefy. He's been taking, taking, uh, he's been taking advantage of training table, and now he's gonna have to find a job because he has three kids and a, and a girlfriend to support. Um, okay. Finally, before we move on to uh, a little bit of football talk, we're gonna read uh, some more reviews. Oh, let's go. So. This one was inspired by the last time we, we read one. We're going to read the good one first, and then we're going to go back to the bad one because I like to finish on the shitty stuff. You know that feeling when you get that you get when you're at a grocery store and an old lady calls you handsome young man? Well, that's how it feels to listen to the Washington Walk-Ons. Best Hawkeye football insight out there with three former players who are funny, entertaining, and never fail to brighten my day just a little. Not to mention the best intro music out there. Puts a tear in my eye and a tingle in my pants. <laughs> hey, that last that last couple words not necessary. Hey, and if you know what, if the wash up walk ons is a little, if if listen, <laughs> if anything has to do with the wash up walk ons, the last sentence is the most important. Yeah, it's it's the tingle <laughs> in your pants for sure. Um, not everybody, not everybody enjoys it that much though. Here down here, this was uh, all the way back in 2019. 
when we weren't even mentioning reviews or talking about it. One star. Average pod. Kevin Ward is easily the best part of this podcast. Kid knows his stuff. Good football mind and overall smart person. I like Tyler, but he isn't as smart as Ward. (laughs) (laughs) True. He's easily my second favorite, and I'll take two out of three. Hey, I'll take two out of three. Drake's rant on Nebraska was solid, but after that, he pretty much can be tuned out. If you are looking for X's and O's, this isn't the podcast for you, which is strange considering they are all former players. If Kevin Ward was on this podcast more, uh, it could easily be a solid four and a half to five star, but alas, he is not. Yeah, but that podcast is from two full, yeah, two full years ago. Yeah, that's true. That's not a recent review, but it was. Like one- to, can I get some uh, acknowledgement by holding this podcast back by, you know, only showing up half the time? I feel like if if I showed up all the time, you know, expectations just be too high. You know, right? Yeah, keep the bar low. Sometimes, yes, you have to, Kevin, you do actually raise the bar a little too much in a lot of situations. Right. And a lot of times the other folks following you just can't quite reach that bar. So right. Yeah, if, you, if you just continue to be mediocre, that would actually be okay. Not only, <laughs> not only is that a true statement, but it was, it was echoed from several people. Uh, and, and Kevin, I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you uh, say what you need to about the situation. But uh, as we all know, Drake did not show up to the podcast that we did on Sunday. And he apologized you for that. Welcome. Yeah, you he, po- welcome. he apologized. Third best on the show. You guys are welcome. <laughs> he, po- he apologized for that on the Patreon episode um, extensively. Uh, and then several people, even though Kevin was on his phone, it was Highway Kevin, several people for the first time in a while, this was the most we've had of this response said, wow, this was a really good breakdown of, what actually happened in the football game. And it was a great analysis by Tyler and Kevin. And then just so happens it was the first one in a while that Drake was not on. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm happy to sleep through more podcasts and just, you know, show up to the Patreon. Ugh, I don't, uh, let's no. I mean, it's a three man game here. Three man <laughs> game. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about what happened. Not, not specific. Well, a little bit specifically the run game. You know what? In fact, because this is a professional podcast, we're going to do that in a second because we got those freaking ad things. Uh, so skip ahead now. This is not a professional podcast because I'm laying in bed eating spicy almonds. <laughs> All right, let's pick it back up. And uh, Drake, you said in the episode we did the extra – You said that you were fading into irrelevancy for the podcast because of the lack of offense that the Hawks have shown through their first four games. I don't know if, I don't know if that's true. I don't think that people come to this pod when they think of the wash of walk-ons again, they think of the tingle in their pants and you give them that tingle in your pants, not because in the, their pants and potentially in your pants. I don't know because of your stories your, your audacity, your some, sometimes over the topness, we could call it authenticity, authenticity. I don't know if they, I don't know if the first thing on people's list is damn, I really come to this podcast because Drake gives me the X's and O's of that (laughs) offense. But, Uh, but I want to know the running game took a step back a little bit. Yeah, man. And the passing game seemed to take a step forward. And if you look at the game before that, the, the run game, we had 250 yards. Goodson went for 150 and three tutties. So th- I think this is more of a thing about putting it all together. And we're going to play Maryland at night on a short week on the Big Ten reopener. You'll hear Dylan, who I talked with earlier, talk about the personnel in Maryland a little in a little bit, but – he said that their strength of their defense, when we're talking about the offense getting stuff going for the Hawks, their strength of their defense is their DBs. Um, and their defense, is, it's not like their defense is an Iowa uh, level defense either. This makes me think, well, maybe this is a game where we can get that run game going on a nice little Big Ten opener. Not only that, 
middle linebacker got dinged up against Kent State last weekend and has not practiced all week. So I think that this is uh, I think this is a good chance, but what has to happen here? The, the, the offensive line, is it, just, is it just them figuring it out? They just have to take the next step to dominating the guy across from them? No, because it's not. That's not the way they block uh, on the offensive line. It's a whole a cohesion thing. Like you, you guys remember when we played teams like Wisconsin, um, and guys would just be running free in pass protection because the communication wasn't right. Mm-hmm. And when they were standing guys up, the count was wrong. The guys weren't block. You know, they weren't sliding to the side correctly. Yada yada. Right. That just is like what's happening in our run game where it might not be that they're not going to the right guys, but when the guard and tackle are working from, you know, three technique to up or whatever the scheme is, Mm -hmm. whatever run play we're we're running, maybe one guy pops off too soon. The guard doesn't catch up. The guy slips in the backfield running back has to make a cut in the backfield. and, And we are always taught in the running back room. If you have to make a cut, behind the line of scrimmage it's a it's like a kind of a dead play anyways and now it's just you do your best to make up for the dead play because running backs should not be having to make their cut before the line of scrimmage because that means the offensive line is getting beat so like it doesn't matter what scheme you're running but we're not running a man scheme where it's just like i got this guy you got this guy i was offensive line is always working through people to the next level because that's kind of like a professional way to block things up. And we play our offensive line in a very professional manner. So I don't know. That's my analysis. So this for you is a communication thing more so than it is. Cohesion, man. Like they can even, they can even block it, right? Like they can be saying deuce, deuce, and they can work a deuce, right? Or they can say Trey in the, and the tackle and tight end know that they, you know, whatever. But Mm -hmm. if they know what they're supposed to do and still they don't execute it properly or they're too early or, you know what I'm saying. So it's that, it's that intangible flow of chemistry. There's the machine that, you know, the oil in the machine. Okay. Is. Do you think that that is, do you think that that should be the, or is the most obvious thing to lag behind with a young offensive line like this? Well, I think it's the most obvious thing to lag behind when they're trying to play eight or nine offensive linemen within the first four games. So like, you know, what a starting offensive line, it's like a, it's a fraternity. It's a five man fraternity. Yeah. That is like, it's that group. It's, and when they're a squad, interchange it, it's not supposed to be like a wide receiver core. It's not supposed to be like a running back by committee unit. Okay. So here's my, yeah. So here's my question. Do you think, and this, and this is partially because of shooter situation, which really I'm hoping, I don't know where he's at, how bad the injury was, how the recovery he's been doing. I imagine he's doing his best to get back to that game shape as quickly as he can, that full game shape, because he is a starter when he's game ready conditioned him and Lindy are starters. And I think Mason Richmond is pretty, he, he's been solid enough to, to lock down that left tackle spot. Ince is left guard. Britt has been in there. Connor Colby has been in there. And then we've got DeJong on the, on the right tackle, which may be the, the biggest weakness of, of the five. Do you think that if they just picked a five, or if they were able to just stick with a five and go that they're, that they would elevate their level of play quicker than if they were just using whoever's the healthiest that week or the yeah, most personally, personally, I think that it, and Kevin could maybe argue this if, cause I'm no genius, but personally, I think that if you just put five out there that all know how to work together and have been working together and get the snaps together and are just in the fire together all the time. It just, I think it just works better, man. Okay. I, I, I'd, 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 I'd agree with that. And obviously you can only play with who's healthy. So, you know, the you know shooter situation or whoever else might be banged up that week. There's nothing much you can do about that. Um, 
if they're really just don't know who their five guys is at this point, that's sort of a problem. Bit, that's a problem for sure. For sure. Um, and I would agree with Drake. If you have five and just go with it, that that group will improve faster than you rotating in eight or nine guys. Right. You're going to get more improvement out of a group of five than you would out of the eight or nine. Okay. Now I'd, I'd say the one exception for that is, is if you have a lot of veteran guys, so like you're subbing in like some extra juniors and seniors guys who've been around guys that know their positions, guys that have played with each other a lot, but that's not the case here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because that the, because we're young, we're younger and inexperienced. Interesting answer. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the people will appreciate that. Now they might be coming for the tingle and the X's and O's after that, Drake. I don't know. Uh, are you, what are you drinking? Kombucha? What is that? Yeah, man. Trying to, trying to do anything I can to help my gut out. Jesus. You really, you changed. Um, okay. One more question then. Uh, and it was, I have to remember my question now. Oh, we saw the long ball and we saw Keegan Johnson, young guy, do some, some good things. We saw Nico catch a long ball. I know that as a specialist, the only cool things I was involved in were trick, trick plays, uh, fakes. And I know that KF had a very, very, um, intense eye for how those worked in practice, right? If we did a fake, Kevin knows if we did, no, but you both know if we had a punt fake in and it didn't work against an unknowing scout team in practice, fat chance that thing was making the the final book for the game. 0% chance. And if it didn't look crisp on Friday walkthrough, 0% chance is getting called. Had to look five, had to look great five times the entire week. Yep. If, 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 if you the went play four is for designed, five, not getting called. If the play is designed for Drake Kulik, 0% chance is getting called. Because <laughs> that some bitch was in the game plan for like 18 cocksucking weeks when I was the guy catching the ball. And then the one week that it was Amani Hooker, well, he got tackled mm. when he shouldn't have. Yeah. He got so, a first down though, I think, right? Yeah, but it should have been a touchdown. Yeah. Where I'm going with this is there's some qualifications during the week where we got to be able to see this thing work against a scout team who probably isn't even going to play it as well as the opposing defense on Saturday will. And KF needs that. He needed it, right? Polcat, I remember the first time we practiced that thing, I was like, Colton, this has to work. Because if you mess this up, it's, it's all over. And it worked. And we brought it to the game eventually. Is it the same sort of thing? I know that it's a little bit different with offensive plays, Drake. But is it the same sort of thing where, and KF mentioned this in his presser yesterday, he needs to see some long balls be completed on the offensive side. He needs to see Spencer take a chance. And then he's more willing to kind of work those into the game plan. He's more willing to take those shots. I know it's not him taking the shots, but is it, is Brian more willing to, to use these plays that the Hawkeye nation wants to see at a Spencer if it's happening in practice or does he just rely on, I know he can make the, I, we didn't see it in practice this week, but I know he can make that throw. So we're still going to call the play. I don't know, man. Yeah. Yes. If so, like, if the quarterback is just playing really well on a Saturday, the whole playbook's open. Okay. Like if your quarterback's balling, your quarterback's balling. Yeah. But at Iowa, it's probably, it's probably better that y you have a good week. If you're trying to run something like mm -hmm. shot plays are different because shot plays are drawn up to beat each defense situation. Like, yeah. There, there's situations where coach expects that they're going to run this coverage and we know how to beat it or that, you know, on third and four they they suck up heavy to the play action and they play this defensive behind it. So this is how we're going to beat it. Like those plays are in the game situational because they're better than any other call we have, regardless of how that's gone the whole week. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, like if the receivers aren't getting open or if the quarterback's just throwing duds, like the coaches don't have that much faith in that part of the offense going into that week. Like you guys know how it is. You got to practice well to play well. So I think when he said they had their best offensive practice earlier in the weeks, I think that some of those bombs, some of those long passes were part of that. And I think that may have catalyzed into those plays being called. And then subsequently Keegan Johnson having his coming out party and freaking balling. Sure. I don't know if catalyzed is a word, but if it is give this podcast an award. Catalyzed is a word. Here's the other thing is the coaches don't decide where the ball gets thrown all the time. It's true. There's very rarely is there just a one or two man route where they're just going deep. And I don't care, Spencer, you're throwing it 40 yards down the field and something's happening. Usually that's the quarterback's first or second read. And if it's not there, you're just checking down to something, but um, that, let's just say this. There was receivers out there running go routes that don't get thrown and that's not on the coaches for them not getting thrown. Right. And I think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think, it, I don't know how it couldn't be a confidence booster for Spencer to see those balls. I mean, those were some pretty passes, right? He threw a couple dimes, and his first touchdown was a dime, just in the bread basket. That's got to feel good, and that's going to instill some confidence. I have to think that make that lets him relax a little bit and say, you know what, maybe I'll take a chance. Maybe I will throw this ball because we do have receivers open downfield sometimes, and 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 sometimes he. And, and again, and, and then it all comes back to protection and this is all puzzle piece together. If he has that time to get to those progressions and see it downfield, I mean, he clearly has the ability to make the throw. So, right. um, and this is for all the fans out there is like, this guy was wide open. Why didn't he throw it to him? Quarterbacks have what's called a read progression. Um, you're going to start out. You're going to kind of try to read the defense before the ball is snapped. Ball got to know where your safeties are at. Always exactly. got to look at your safeties. Yeah, if you got one high safeties, two high safeties, if he looks like man to man, cover three, cover eight, cover two, I don't know, one of them. You get the snap, you're immediately looking at your first read. You should be able to diagnose the coverage from there. Yeah. Um, based off what your first read is doing. So, say you, the court, the, you're running a smash route. Smash route is the outside guy runs a hitch, inside guy runs a corner. The quarterback's reading. And what coverage does that beat, Kevin? Tell them what coverage that beats. That beats cover two. It beats a lot of coverages, man. So, yep. So say they're running cover two. You're reading the corner. If the corner sinks underneath the corner, if the corner sinks underneath the corner route, I should say, you throw the ball to the hitch. Yep. If he doesn't, you throw the ball to the corner. Now, sometimes there's blown coverage on the other side of the field. Guess what? That was probably his third or fourth read. So if that guy's running wide open, he's never even going to look at it. Right. And, and when you're in the stands, this is where we're going with this. When you're in, the, you're stands, in the stands, a hundred feet above the field is really easy to see that guy. Holy shit. Those receivers are open. It if is you're the quarterback in the pocket, the coordinator. If, if you're the quarterback in the, in the, yeah, exactly. You're the court the coordinator. See it. They'll come back to it and say, Hey, Spencer, they blew this last time. I uh, go may want to look over there next time. But if you're the quarterback in the pocket behind five, six foot five, 300 pound dudes blocking four, six foot five, 300 pound dudes. And you only have the ability to look to the right or like, you know, you can't see. Right. right, That same. So that's why quarterbacks have progressions. Go one, two, three. Dude, if you make it to your fourth or fifth read, congratulations. Your offensive line is amazing. And, and, and now that we're going through this, even though I know all of this, dude, it's so hard to be a quarterback. Oh, it's God. so hard. It's, yeah. So one, yeah, you, like you said, you have to be able to diagnose the coverage to a fairly certain degree before the ball is snapped. That's right. why you'll see a bunch of pre-snap motion became really popular. Because um, it tells you who's guarding who. It can. It can. It can help diagnose if they're playing zone man, what type of zone they're playing, to within a relative degree of certainty. Um, and then at the snap, you have literally a half second to be sure on what coverage it is. And then from there, you know, find the open man, make the throw. 
you know, just making the throw is not easy. Like you, you, you go, oh, watch yeah. guys play seven on seven. It's like some of these throws are pretty hard to make, you know? I mean, Hawkeye fans just be glad that none of us three were back at quarterback. Cause that would have been a bad deal. I mean, think about how big a football field is a 10 yard out route to the other side of the field is like a 40 yard throw. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. Uh, so just a little perspective there. Um, Maryland. We're going to talk a little bit about, about Maryland. Okay. Drake, you mentioned that you don't know shit about them. I don't know if it's worth us really guessing or uh, just, you know, projecting what we may think happened. Essentially what they got is a quarterback who can throw it around. It's to his brother. Um, they're scoring 37 points a game. They've, they're, they're putting up 520 yards per game. And as me and Kevin mentioned on Sunday's episode, or I guess Monday's episode, uh, they, they spread it around to a lot of guys. Um, five receivers have 12 or more catches. And that's a lot. Um, they, ha- they have athletes. And they haven't played great competition, but they have a similar opponent and handled them sort of like we handled them, arguably maybe better. So they also haven't seen a defense like ours. And Jack Campbell had 18 tackles last week. He tackled everybody in Kinnick Stadium last week and got like national defensive player of the week, which he deserves. We've had a couple national defensive player of the weeks. Yeah. Um, So I don't know. I don't know if this game is so much about Maryland. And oftentimes it's not about your opponent. It's just about you. And that's what we would be preached to a lot when we were on the inside was if we just play our best game, how many times did we hear KF say, Hey, if we play our game, okay. If we fucking do the things that we got to do, all right, this game will work out in our favor, but we got to go do it. All right. We got to be humming. People love the KF. It's not even that good. It used to be so much better when Kevin and I talked like that for two Uh, minutes straight. We we can't overuse it, man. We, you know, in situations, I I like it in funny situations. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to redo the man's game speeches. No, I mean, it's like it, it, if this line figures it out, they get some of that congruency. The defense continues to play like they play. The long snapper gets the snaps up a little bit, lets Tori unleash the cannon. Spencer makes a couple throws. It's the same story. If we can get the run game to just be good and Spencer can make four, three or four throws during the game and our defense plays like they play, we win the ball game. Because I know that that – that those receivers and that offense probably hasn't seen a pass rush like our defensive line has provided the last few games. And they definitely haven't seen a, a back seven like we have. So I don't know. Any thoughts? Um, I, I think the key for the defense is going to be contained to a junior. Um, if uh, make him uncomfortable make him make tough throws. I think Someone did say we should put Epines's brother in and see if we could have a little more <laughs> for those that <laughs> didn't know. Epi is the one who took Tua out, broke his ribs uh, two weeks ago. And so, and his brother's on, on the Hawks right now. So maybe we put him in. He does the same thing to, to tell Talia. Um, well, yeah, from what I've seen from him, uh, he, he's good at making the easy throws. So just make him tough throws. There you go. And I think our defensive line, guys, it's been a little pleasant surprise. Valk, all those boys, they're going to put pressure on them. Yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're playing great in the run game. And the past couple of games, the pressure has gotten way up. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, if, we, if we get pressure with four this game, I think the Hawks' defense is in for another sub-14. There's going to be some interception opportunities in this game because they like to throw it around. 13 sacks from that defensive line through four games. That's on pace to be way above average for the Hawks, especially in their good seasons. Um, Before we go to the second break, I'm going to reshare the screen because this was supposed to be something that I shared earlier. This was a comment on one of our uh, Facebook posts on our CSU recap. This guy right here says, what's up, fellas? Shout out from M. This is Kyle Gard. What's up, fellas? Shout out from Montana. I fight wildfires for the U S forest service, which means I'm out in remote wilderness for two weeks at a time, then two days home, rinse, 
repeat till the snow flies and the fires die. It's not easy to be a diehard hawk here, but I find my ways. Often I have to hike to the ridge tops to get service, download my Wash Up Walk Ons <laughs> podcast, and set my YouTube TV DVR to record the game so I can listen to your podcast and watch the game in my sleeping bag under the Northern Rockies night sky. Have yet to miss a game or an episode this year, despite the 16 hour work days and 1200 hours of overtime I've put in since April. Keep up the good content. Hashtag Hawks by a million. And this is this man. What a goddamn legend. Kyle, Kyle guard. You are an American legend. Are you kidding Kyle me? Gard. That is absolutely legendary status. What Kyle is- Gard is the exact type of man we're looking for on the Wash the Walk Ons podcast. Unbelievable. I mean, that is I- just fighting forest fires for two weeks at a time. 16 hour days. Are you shitting me? I'm not that tough. I'm a pussy. Not even close. Dude, dude it's, like, it's like it's another day for him. He's popping in the Washed Up Walk Ons podcast and going out and fighting forest fires. Unbelievable. We got to put out some more content for him. Some content. Dude, he's uh, got to make some content for us. I'd love to have him on the podcast. He's probably got a hell of a story. So we might Holy have shit. to have old Kyle Guard on to talk about that. Those guys you. are called smoke jumpers, right? I don't know if. Enter the black, baby. Yeah, Remember I mean, that's it? enter in the black, and we could get into yeah. that. Um, when we come back, it's your favorite segment, Ward's Winners. We'll be back in a second. Kevin. This isn't fun anymore. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Football doesn't even make sense anymore, dude. We're back. It's Ward's Winners. At this I was point. 0-3 this week. Oh, motion, three. motion to change the name of the segment and to change the intro because I don't. It's not fun when you're not winning. Motion denied. Drake, I can I, I get that seconded? If I get a gavel, if I had a gavel. Motion I denied. Would. Motion denied. There we go. Um, <laughs> this is boys. Words- we had a couple good weeks, and now we just didn't have that good of a week. Uh. So I, I'm going to correct myself. Someone actually corrected me. UCLA ended up scoring late and beating Stanford by more than four and a half. So I was actually two and one last week. Oh, um, we fucking do. Yeah. So way to hold us together. Notre Dame and UCLA pulled through Michigan state evidently wanted to play it close with the frosties and two and one Kevin was one and two Drake. Oh, and three, that's three and six. It was really uh, three and five on the pod. Not great. Not great, but we Bad. don't, we don't quit. There's no quitting around here. No, of course not. I just threw in a 15 team parlay. You think I'm quitting? <laughs> oh, no. I'm swinging for the fences. motherfucker. <laughs> All right. Well, that is, that is what we're here for, baby. Yeah. Hold them pistols high and bang, 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 bang. Yeah. Um, Kevin's a got mile a f- long. Kevin's got a, a CVS receipt of a betting slip there with him. And uh, it's, it's Thursday, which means the walk-ons have more picks. And so we're going to give them to you, Kevin. Is there, I don't think there's anyone telling anything we're saying out anymore. No. Maybe, maybe, maybe beef pick. I don't know. No, the, 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 the books are actually, the, the sports books are actually listening in on this. They're like, all right, who are they taking? We're going to, we're going to sweeten that deal up even more. Cause we know they're not hitting. Uh, yeah, I don't know how sports because it sponsored us yet, man. We're seriously, we're making money. them a shitload of money. Anyway, what do we got? Do I have to? Yeah, you have to. The fans <laughs> want to know. All right. I texted y'all this one on Sunday night. Um, as soon as I saw the line, I like Ole Miss plus 14 and a half versus Bama. Um, I told myself anything over two touchdowns. I'm riding a hottie toddy rebels. They're coming I'm taking of, that one as well because that feels like a slam dunk. Yep. They're, they're, they're coming off a baby. bye week. Their offense and Matt Corral is as good as advertised. Um, and their defense has made so far an incredible um, improvement over the last two years where they were just giving up scores left and right. But I like, uh, I like Ole Miss to cover the two touchdowns plus the hook. Next one. Staring me dead in the face. I put it on the cards. Don't like it very much. But <laughs> Michigan versus Wisconsin. 
Oh man. The under is at 43 and a half. That is a low under and I'm still taking it. I don't know. You got two good defenses and two very average offenses. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a whole lot of leeway there. Like it's either going to be for sure an under or it's not even going to be close. But, uh, yeah, give me the under in that game. And then I also got the under in the Minnesota-Purdue game, um, both coming off pretty poor offensive performances. And I think Purdue's um, quarterback might be out this game. Well, their running back's also out still, so that's, that's a big yikes. But also Minnesota lost to Bowling Green, so who knows, right? Who knows? Yeah, and Purdue's, Purdue's defense has looked solid. They, they didn't have a great game versus Notre Dame, but that's about it. Yeah. All right. Those are the, those are the three. What's the confidence level there at this point? Not very high. I actually like two of them. I like the Mississippi okay. pick and I like the Minnesota under and then uh, the Wisconsin under. Yeah. I always like my picks. I'm not doing horrible. See, man, when, when you, when you go, I don't know what I am, maybe couple games under 500 and you start losing confidence in yourself you're five and seven and so is drake yeah uh, and i am six five and one so somehow the guy who le- makes the least bets out of everything no i don't make any bets i i don't really do much sports oh betting. i'll just pick them how can you ask the people to tell you if yeah, you're not making the bets here's yeah, what i'm gonna do this I've week always said that i just make my picks uh, this has been since the beginning of the podcast this is your segment and then i just make some picks Here's my picks. Take an Iowa minus three. I feel good about the Hawks. Ooh, where you get minus three? That's three and a hook, I heard. Uh, everywhere right now, it says minus three on here. Uh, other than FanDuel is three and a half, but uh, DraftKings is minus three. Caesars is minus three. MGM is minus three. So it's been bet down. All right. Though I do think it could be... It, I might be asking for a Caleb Shudak field goal to break a tie and win the game at the end. Of, I don't know. I'm taking Iowa minus three. Indiana, Penn State. I think they both can sp- score points. Indiana hasn't been great at winning games, but they have scored some points in the last few weeks. They are playing Penn State. Good defense. Penn State loves to... Th- to score that thing over under currently sitting at 53 and a half taking the over taking the over on that and then i thought about spiting iowa state and taking kansas plus 33 thought about (laughs) um i'm not going to do that i'm gonna take notre dame to cover one and a half against Cincinnati. I think they're getting one and a half. They are getting they're getting one and a half. I, they're I want them to cover the plus one and a half. Gotcha, gotcha. I think they'll win that game. I don't think Notre Dame is great. Cincinnati I, coming off a of bye week. I don't necessarily think Cincinnati's great, and Notre Dame is riding off some confidence with a nice win over Wisconsin. I'll take Notre Dame to cover, or to. To, uh, I mean, I'm not going to take a money line, but I do think they'll win that game straight up. Drake, we went over our picks in the extra. Uh, but what are your three for today? Because there weren't many that you were, like, dead set on. Yeah, I definitely like the Ole Miss pick. Other than that one. And then I uh, I would have bet on the Hawks, or I would have put the Hawks in, but you put them in, so I'll leave that one off. Okay. Um. I'm going to give you two picks from the NFL and why I'll take the chargers minus three at home against the Raiders. And that's just because it looks like the chargers might be one of the strongest teams in the NFL and the lions in the NFL haven't been as low as like you would typically see. I, I don't think like seven points in the NFL is a lot. And you see a lot of lines at seven, eight, et cetera. Uh, and if you can get the best team in the world, potentially only having three to cover three points, 
Face Neiman. Excuse me? Face bad. Neiman in the Chargers, best team in the world. I don't know, man. They could be. They just beat the the Bucks, and the Bucks are defending champs that were they beat the Chiefs. before that. They beat the Chiefs. But still, we get it. They're good. My fault, my the fault. They're a top my five. Fault. They're a top five team, I think. And that was the other team I was going to pick, potentially, was you can get the Rams at minus four at home against the Cardinals, and the Cardinals are a good team. I like but that pick. I kind of just like it because it's less points than most other teams have to try and cover. So you're back and in L.A. Uh, this week, the city. Yeah, I don't know. I think the L.A. teams are playing the best ball right now. And I don't really love the fact I would almost like to take the Titans to cover seven against New York because the Jets, because they don't even look like they can score, but I'll leave it at the, the two LA teams. Imagine if when, the, are, the, when are the Jets going to get demoted to the XFL? <laughs> They're going to bring in the St. Louis battle Hawks and drop the Jets down. When, when was the last time the Jets had a winning season? Oh God! It's, it well, I think the, I think the Jaguars are on the worst losing streak. Jets. No, well, the Jaguars went to the AFC Championship sometime within the last decade. Blake yeah. Bortles, Bortles yeah. service. Yeah, they yeah. won like eleven games or something, maybe twelve. Um, yeah, but like, tell me the last time the Jets. Yeah, were I'm looking it up right decent. now. Decent, not good, just decent. Ten and six in 2015. No, they were not. Really? Yeah. Let me let me double check that here. Win loss regular season 2015. They were 10 and 6. Other than that, it's been other than that, they were 8 and 8 in 2013 and 2011. Yeah, they actually went 11 and 5 in 2010. But since 2015, it's been 5 and 11, 5 and 11, 4 and 12, 7 and 9, 2 and 14. It's not good. No, it's not. All right. Well, a little less wind in this segment right now until we get. Yeah, yeah. Those are the picks. Go ahead and fade them and make a million bucks. Um, It is what it is. It's an 18 parlaying for you right there. Just fade them all. If you're still sticking around, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate everything you do for us, continuing to listen. Kyle guard is an absolute legend. I still can't get over that. I think that's the main takeaway from this podcast. Yeah. That, that man is <laughs> someone give that guy a trophy. That man is, as the kids would say, built different. Yeah. He he's built different. Huh? Uh, put him on a Wheaties box. That's it. Iowa. In fact, by the time you're listening to this tomorrow plays tomorrow. Hey. At- how do y'all feel about the Friday night games for college? I'm all general? for it. I'm all for it. It's a money grab, but of course it is. I, but I don't mind Friday. Friday's fine. Dude, Friday night lights, man. You know what it is? Friday as a player, it. as a player, you then get you then get that Saturday off day. Probably. Like, because Sunday they're gonna come in and so I mean you at least get the weekend, right? You get Saturday, it, it, Sunday. Either that or KS putting an extra practice in on Sunday and you're watching film on Saturday. Change. <laughs> I think it gives a huge advantage to the home team, though, having because they don't have to have the travel day. Yes, but Iowa, the way we switch things with Thursday being the off day, 